Hey, hello, Nick DeGilio here, and uh, hi, how you doing? Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Subscribe, please do. Check me out on Patreon.com. It's a great way to help out. All this stuff is DIY that I'm doing, the videos and the content. And if you want exclusive content and exclusive videos, especially the story about what really happened at WGN, behind the scenes stuff, I'm doing that for my patrons. I'm telling that story for my patrons. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Give some, uh, give some dough, donate three bucks, nine bucks, 25 bucks a month, whatever you want to do. It helps out. Every bit helps out and you get uh, some exclusive uh, content as well. My podcast starts in less than a week, less than a week on Radio Misfits Podcast Network. So check out radiomisfits.com. Okay. Uh, tomorrow night, I am going to see the latest uh, sequel to Scream. Um, a great horror franchise, really one of the best and most consistent horror franchises of all time. There have been four Scream movies, and um, I think all of them are great. Um, you know, some are better than others. The first two are phenomenal. The first one is a classic. Um, the second one I think is great, too. Third one, very, very good. Fourth one is very good, too. It's not great. Um, but all four of them are absolutely worth seeing, are absolutely terrific horror movies, uh, entertaining, and it's, it's very rare that um, a, a series of four movies, you know, a movie with three sequels, and all of them are good. And that's the case with Scream, and I'm really looking forward to the new one. But here's the thing that's starting to piss me off a little bit, and that's what this is about. Why are they just using, why is it this thing now? When did this happen, and why is it a thing to call the movie just Scream. There's already a movie called Scream, okay? came out in 1996. What is this thing now with taking sequels and just calling them the name of the original movie? What the fuck is that? It's the dumbest thing ever. Why is this not Scream 5? We all know it's the fifth movie. If you're a fan of the series, you're not fooling anybody. This is not a new movie. This is a sequel to the other four films. So, in essence, it's Scream 5, and yet it's just called Scream. I think that's so annoying and so stupid. Um, not only is it annoying and stupid, but sometimes like if you're looking something up, you know, on the internet or maybe you're buying tickets and they're doing it like, for instance, uh, a week ago they put the tickets or a couple of weeks ago they put the tickets for Scream 5, as I'll refer to it, on sale. And I got my ticket because I want to see it. I'm going to see it tomorrow night, the night before it actually opens because I'm very excited about it. And yet they were doing a special edition screening of the 1996 version. So in order to get the tickets, if you went online to like Fandango or AMC or any of those places, there were two different screams. So you could have bought a ticket to the 2022 Scream um, thinking that you were going to the 1996 Scream because they're both fucking called Scream. How hard is it to put a five on the end of it? It just drives me crazy. And they've been doing that now. Uh, Halloween from 2018. Maybe it didn't begin there, um, but that's another example of, of, of how fucking annoying it is. They just called the movie Halloween. All right, we'll come up with a different title. Halloween is a movie from 1978. And in addition to the fact that uh, the 2018 Halloween is a piece of steaming shit, um, it also has a really stupid name. Now, in the sequel to the 2018 version of Halloween, it's called Halloween Kills. Also a steaming pile of shit, and it'll be followed by... Halloween Ends, uh, which will also be a steaming pile of shit, but at least those last two movies have actual names. Halloween from 2018, there's already a movie called Halloween. Fucking don't call it Halloween. Call it Halloween Now or Halloween 2018 like they did when uh, Halloween H2O came out. They called it Halloween H2O. That's a different title. They didn't just call it Halloween. In 2018, they released a movie called Halloween. Lazy, stupid, moronic. How about The Fast and the Furious? At one point... There are, I don't know how, I really don't know how many Fast and the Furious movies. There are nine, right? F9 was the last one? Okay, so there's been nine of them. And at one point, they, you know, the very first one is called The Fast and the Furious, but at one point, uh, they released Fast and Furious. So they got rid of the thes. I don't know if that, I don't know. Again, lazy. Like, hey, I'm, what are you going to see? I'm going to see Fast and Furious. Wow, it took you 20 years to see that one. No, no, Fast and Furious, not The Fast and the Furious. I think maybe it started with that. I think that's what started it. I think the people who were making the Fast and the Furious movies were kind of like lazy and just went, just get rid of the thes. They don't need them. Fast and Furious, brand new movie. Stupid. Um, uh, there is also uh, Final Destination. The Final Destination came out in 2000, okay? And then they, they I don't know how many there have been Final Destination movies. The only one that matters to me is the second one, and the only thing about the second one is the first 20 minutes. All the other movies are shit. 
and the rest of Final Destination 2 after the first 20 minutes is shit, but the first 20 minutes of Final Destination 2 is great. But it was called Final Destination, and then one of the sequels, I don't know which one, because again, I don't know how many there are, is called The Final Destination. So that's a real, you know, creative idea. The Final Destination. Uh, let's see. There's also The Thing from uh, John Carpenter, 1982. Now, The Thing is a remake of The Thing from Another Planet, or The Thing from Another World. Um, and they shortened it to The Thing. Um, but there is a prequel to The Thing. Thing was released in 1982. The prequel was released in, in uh, 2011, and that was just called The Thing. They didn't call it anything else. They called it The Thing. So the prequel to The Thing from 82 was called The Thing, also a piece of shit. But well, come up with a different title. Um, how about Predator? There was Predator, and then there was The Predator years later, which was a sequel to Predator. Just add the. So I guess that's an okay thing. How about Shaft? There was a remake of Shaft in 2000 uh, with Samuel L. Jackson. And then there was a sequel to that one called Shaft, 2019. Shaft. Now, so now there's three movies called Shaft. One is an original, one is a remake, and one is a sequel to the remake, but it's called Shaft. Okay? Um, and then there is Rambo. Uh, Rambo First Blood Part Two, which most people just call Rambo. Um... Uh, was was released in 84 uh, and then in 2008 Rambo was released that's St Stallone made and and directed so it's called Rambo so now you got Rambo and now we have Scream we have what is essentially Scream 5 and I will continue to refer to it as Scream 5 but it's called Scream so I don't understand this I don't understand this new and there are other ones that are coming out there are other movies that are coming out that they drop the number at the end of it or a hyphen with a title at the end of it you know, uh, and now they're just calling it Scream or Halloween, you know, uh, just so it's just so stupid. But this is not the first time that movies have had the same title. And sometimes it gets a little confusing because there are a lot of movies out there that have the same title. They're not related in any way. They are not sequels like these same titled uh, movies are. It's not the example of a lazy exec just saying, ah, just call it Scream. No five, just Scream. Uh, but these movies have the exact same title, but they are completely different movies completely different so like if you if you if you download one or you stream one and you're expecting the other uh you might either be disappointed uh surprised shocked or amused but there are movies that have the same title that are not the same movies that are clearly not the same that are completely different uh so like for instance let's start with bad boys bad boys uh the ridiculous and terrible michael bay uh movie with um will smith and uh, uh, and Martin Lawrence is a piece of shit, uh, stupid action movie. Uh, came out in 1995. But there is another Bad Boys that came out in 1983, shot right here in Chicago with Sean Penn, um, uh, which is a much better movie. Sean Penn, Ali Sheedy, uh, Rennie Santoni, um, uh, uh, Clancy Brown. It's about a bunch of a bunch of kids in a detention center, like a, a, a juvie hall, and it's like a prison movie for juvies. And Sean Penn plays the the lead. It's a great movie, uh, directed by Rick Rosenthal, who would go on to direct Halloween Two, not Halloween, or the other Halloween or Halloween, but actually Halloween Two. But anyway, Bad Boys, the original from 1983. It's not an original, but it's got the same title as that Michael Bay piece of shit with Will Smith. But if you want to see a, a movie called Bad Boys that's actually good. You should check out the one from 1983 with Sean Penn. Uh, and then there is um, The Avengers. Um, the Avengers from 2012, that's obviously the Marvel Universe movie with all the Avengers and the Iron Man and Spider-Mans and all that other shit. Uh, and then the other one was The Avengers, which was based on the TV series, the movie version of the TV series, uh, that features um, uh, the, the Avengers, that the old Patrick McNee uh, Diana Rigg show, which was replaced by Ray Fiennes and uh, Uma Thurman um, as Emma Peel. So uh, the Avengers, not this one. I, I would say that you're better off watching the Marvel movie clearly than the terrible movie from uh, 1998 that tried to bring that old TV series back. An awful movie, The Avengers. Awful movie. Uh, Twilight. So we all know the Twilight movies. They started in 2009, based on those stupid vampire novels, teen novels. Uh, launched the careers of, um, not really launched, but like really, yeah, it did launch pretty much big time the careers of Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, uh, who would go on to be great actors. Don't hold the Twilight movies against them. 
because Christian, Christian Stewart and Robert Pattinson are two of the most interesting, two of the best actors on the planet right now. Uh, but yeah, Twilight was a was a uh, the vampire movies. But there was a Twilight that came out in 1998, which is a really terrific movie with uh, Paul Newman, Gene Hackman, and Susan Sarandon. A really great character study, um, and one of one of uh, the, all three of them, Hackman, Susan Sarandon, and Paul Newman, all great in it. Uh, but don't get that mixed up. Uh, but in fact, if you want to see the Paul Newman one and you end up watching the vampire movie, you're going to be pissed. So Twilight from 1998 with Paul Newman, great. Obviously, the vampire Twilight movies, they're all shit. Uh, here's, here's another one. Uh, Rush. Rush was this fantastic movie from 1991 with Patrick, uh, Jason Patrick and Jennifer Jason Leigh. Um, they play like undercover cops who are infiltrating this drug ring, and they end up getting hung up on They all end up getting strung up and hooked up on drugs and, and uh, um, addicted to H. And it's a really, really dark Really fucking fucked up movie, but a really good one. It also featured. It was the actually the feature featured the Eric Clapton song "Tears in Heaven" was in that. But then years later, in uh, 2012, Ron Howard made a terrible uh, uh, racing car movie called Rush with one of the Hemsworths. I don't know which. Take your Hemsworth. One of them is in it. Uh, and it, when it came out, I was like, well, it's nowhere near as good as the drug addiction movie. Uh, very dark, fucked up, really dark and twisted movie, Rush. So if you're looking for a movie about a race car driver uh, and you end up watching a movie where Jennifer Jason Lee and uh, Jason Patrick do a lot of drugs and have sex a lot, you rented the wrong movie. Uh, Crash. Here's a big one, Crash. Um, in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was flipping around through my cable and I saw that Crash was going to be on the Flix channel, the Flix cable channel. By the way, Flix cable channel, fantastic. One of the hidden gems of cable. I don't know who programs the Flix uh, movie channel, F-L-I-X. I don't know who programs it. Great job. It's a great channel. Kind of under the radar, but they're consistently doing really interesting stuff. But anyway, they had Crash was coming up, and I looked at the description on my guide, and it was the fucking Crash that Paul Haggis directed with Sandra Bullock and, you know, Don Cheadle uh, and Matt Dillon. Um, that's from 2004. But the, the Crash that I'm talking about is from 1996, based on J.G. Ballard's fantastic novel, uh, with uh, James Spader, directed by David Cronenberg, written and directed by David Cronenberg. Uh, James Spader, Holly Hunter, Elias Codius, um, uh, uh, Rosanna Arquette. Uh, it's basically about people who like to crash cars and fuck. That's it. There's a lot of blood, a lot of sex, a lot of goo, a lot of semen. It's, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite books ever. Uh, and it is a book that, um, when you read it, J.G. Ballard, who, you know, who from Empire of the Sun, the, the you know, the actual author who was the kid in Empire of the Sun who wrote that book. Um, when you read this book, it's pretty astonishing. It's one of my favorite books of all time. But it's a book that you can't read one page and not have the word blood or semen on that page. Because it really is. It is as twisted a movie as you can possibly get. It's people who, uh, who's, uh, you know, who, who, the thing that turns them on um, that they have uh, is smashing cars. They get into cars and they crash the cars together. And, and then fuck and bleed all over the place among, like, crashed up and twisted cars. Um, and that's what it's about. It's about crashing cars and having sex and having sex with wounds. and all. It, it is as crazy and as twisted uh, a, a movie as you can possibly get. And it's Cronenberg and it's great. And it's miles different than the Paul Haggis nonsense from 2004 and a million times better. But I was reading the book. I'll never forget this. I was on the L subway going downtown many years ago when I was reading for the first time, because I've read it many times, J.G. Ballard's Book of Crash. And I'm sitting there and I'm reading it and a woman gets on the subway at one of the stops and she comes over and it's a pretty crowded subway and she comes and sits next to me. And so I'm reading there, I'm sitting there reading my book, I'm reading Crash, and suddenly I can feel, you know when someone is reading over your shoulder and you can feel it, you know? And so I could feel that she was indeed like looking over my shoulder and reading what I was reading and she was looking over my shoulder and I'm sitting there reading Crash a couple of seconds go by, a couple of, you know, 30 seconds go by. She quietly gets up, walks over to the other side of the L and sits down next to somebody else. So if you ever don't want anybody to sit next to you on a subway, read Crash and let them look at what you're reading. And then they will definitely get up and think that you are some sort of sexual deviant psycho. And they will leave you alone. So it's a great... But anyway, the movie Crash from 1996, Masterpiece. The one from 2004... Uh, okay, Gladiator. Here's another one. The, the, the 2000 version of Gladiator, or the t movie titled Gladiator, uh, with Russell Crowe, directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, a terrible movie. Awful movie. One uh, best picture that year, which of course it shouldn't have. It's absurd. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, the Gladiator movie. 
Uh, we all know what it is. Are you entertained and all this shit and Joaquin Phoenix and the late great Oliver Reed, but a terrible movie, piece of shit. One of the many, many pieces of shit that the untalented Ridley Scott has directed. But there was one called Gladiator that came out in 1992, which was a boxing movie uh, with uh, one of the guys from uh, Twin Peaks and Cuba Gooding Jr. Really cool boxing movie. Uh, in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, my good friend Tony Fitzpatrick is in it, shot partially in Chicago. Gladiator, really cool genre boxing movie, much better than that piece of crap gladiator uh, nonsense that Ridley Scott made with, with uh, Russell Crowe. So the 1992 ver uh, movie title Gladiator, much better. Frozen, here's a big one. 2010, Eli Roth made a movie called Frozen uh, with some people who are caught on a ski lift and they can't get down. And it starts to get really, really cold out there. And they're stuck up there with nobody to rescue them in the middle of the night. And it becomes like, what are they going to do? How are they going to survive? Are they going to have to eat each other? And it's very intense, really beautifully done, really awesome movie about people stuck on a ski lift in the middle of a blizzard, in the middle of frozen, being frozen, and they might eat each other and die. The other Frozen, we all know, animated movie. You know, with all those goddamn songs. And anybody who's a parent out there, unfortunately, you've probably seen Frozen 75,000 times. But if your kid says, hey, let's watch Frozen, pop in the Eli Roth movie one time, and they'll never ask to see Frozen again. That's my, that's my little uh, tip to parents out there. If your kids keep going, I want to watch Frozen again, I want to watch Frozen, I want to watch Frozen. Okay, here, here's Frozen. Put on the Eli Roth movie about cannibals on a, uh, a ski lift. They'll never ask to watch that fucking movie again. Uh, and then there's uh, The Fast and the Furious. Now, I mentioned The Fast and the Furious before, but there was actually a movie called The Fast and the Furious that was about cars, really low budget. Roger Corman, I believe, produced a uh, movie about cars, but wasn't at all about what the 2001 version was, the Vin Diesel, Paul Walker movie. But it had the same title. That was the only thing that was really in common. Uh, they're both good films, completely different movies, but both good. Um, Project X, this is a big one. Project X, 1987. Jonathan Kaplan directed this movie that features uh, some weird experiments with chimpanzees and Matthew Broderick. And this was Matthew Broderick fresh off of Ferris Bueller. So he was, uh, he just came off of playing the most entitled, most despicable piece of shit jag off in the history of movies to playing a pretty likable guy who's caught up in this intrigue about weird experiments uh, being done um, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to chimpanzees and you know flying jets and stuff like that. The other uh, Project X is this fucking horrible found footage, like uh, frat party movie. Uh, horrible, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Project X. It was like this. I think it was MTV produced, but it came out during the whole. Well, it still hasn't died down, but during the real peak of the found footage genre. Uh, and this one was just found footage of a fucking bunch of idiots uh, going to different parties or going to a huge party and drinking and puking and jumping into pools and taking off their clothes and fucking and date rape and all kinds of ridiculous shit. So it was this gritty found footage um, party movie, frat party movie. Terrible, terrible. But the original Project X, terrific, terrific thriller uh, and, a, and a good movie. Uh, Notorious, 1946, obviously Cary Grant. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock. There was a movie that came out in 2009 called Notorious, which was about uh, Biggie Smalls, about the Notorious B.I.G. Both of them are good, but completely different. So if you think you're going to see a Cary Grant movie and then suddenly, you know, the Notorious B.I.G. pops up, you got the wrong movie. But they're both sort of, sort of worthwhile. Uh, proof. Uh, this one uh, is an interesting one. The, the, proof, the, fir the first one called Proof came out in 1991. It stars Hugo Weaving as a blind guy. And Russell Crowe is his best friend. And Hugo Weaving, in order to uh, have proof that people are being true to him uh, and the relationships that he's had and the experiences that he's had, since he's blind, he, he is a photographer and he takes pictures so that there is proof to people of what the life that he led. Um, and in these pictures, he suddenly, you know, has taken these pictures and it is discovered that Russell Crowe, who plays his best friend, is having uh, a, a relationship with this girl that he loves. And it's about trust and it's about, uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, the issues you know, of, of between friends and girlfriends and people that you love, told from an interesting point of view, interesting, uh, an interesting point of view, blind guy taking pictures. Uh, great movie. Uh, Jocelyn Morehouse directed it, a great Australian film from 1991. The Other Proof, also a good film, based on a great play, uh, and this one stars Gwyneth Paltrow, and it's about uh, a, the daughter of a mathematician who is kind of uh, struggling with a brain disorder and struggling with uh, Alzheimer's and, and other things, and, and it's about their relationship. And it's a good film. It's a good film. Proof from 2000, uh, 
2009, I guess, or 2005, and then The Proof from 1991 with Hugo Weaving as a blind photographer. Both good movies, but completely different. Uh, Crossroads. This is a funny one. 1986, Walter Hill, the great Walter Hill director of such classics as uh, Streets of Fire and 48 Hours, uh, The Warriors, uh, The Driver, uh, you know, the, the Southern Comfort, uh, Hard Times. I mean, Walter Hill, one of the greatest directors of all time, directed this movie with Ralph Macchio, who plays a guitarist who takes an old blues man back home to his, to, to his roots in Mississippi, and then it ends with him dueling with Steve Vai, who plays Satan. And they play guitar. It's all about old blues. It's all about blues. The the uh, the whole myth of uh, going down to the crossroads and selling your soul to the devil to be able to play the guitar. Uh, really wonderful, really quirky movie. Uh, Ralph Macchio uh, guitar movie. But then in 2002, a movie called Crossroads came out with fucking Britney Spears. Uh, it was a Britney Spears uh, wacky sort of comedy. It was the first big movie uh, that Britney Spears came out. at the height of her popularity in 2002. And it's a really sort of terrible movie. Uh, a couple of original songs from her. And Zoe Saldana is in the movie before she became Zoe Saldana. Um, and so don't mix them up. If you want to see a really terrific movie about the blues, uh, Walter Hill directed it from 1986. Rent that Crossroads. Don't stream the fucking movie with Britney Spears. It's as different as you could possibly get. So, all right. Uh, and then there is uh, The Island. Uh, the Island, 1980. A great, dark, twisted, fucked up, violent, Michael Abted directed pirate movie with Michael Caine. Um, based on a Peter Benchley novel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, David Warner is in it. it is, it's a really cool movie, but it's really fucked up and twisted and weird uh, and dark. <laughs> and dark uh, very violent. Uh, but I loved it. So The Island with Michael Caine about crazy pirates uh, killing each other and having sex and raping and doing all the pillaging and all that shit. And then there's The Island that Michael Bay, another shitty Michael Bay movie, uh, directed from uh, 2005. And this is with, uh, I think it's Ewan McGregor, but it's Scarlett Johansson. I, I know Scarlett Johansson is in it. She's kind of unforgettable in it. And it's a stupid futuristic sci-fi movie. Uh, really bad. Uh, if you want to see a movie called The Island that's cool, uh, check out the one with Michael Caine and the crazy uh, pirates. And then there's Heat. Heat... Um, Obviously, people know The Heat from 1995. Michael Mann directed it. Uh, De Niro, Pacino, Val Kilmer. Um, a lot of people really love that movie. I'm in the minority. I think that movie sucks. Uh, except for the extended uh, shootout sequence with the police uh, in the streets, which is a phenomenal you know, shootout scene. One of the best gunplay scenes ever filmed. Except for that, I fucking hate that movie. Pacino's embarrassing in it. That's because she's got a great ass. And you got your head up it. Most one of the most embarrassing performances Al Pacino's ever given. Uh, I hate that movie, uh, but people really love it. Uh, but there was a Heat that came out in, in '87 with goddamn Burt Reynolds. At a time when Burt Reynolds was making movie after movie, he made like Stick and Malone. He was making these movies in the '80s that because he had, uh, he he fell on hard times at the time. At the time, he had an accident. He lost a bunch of weight. He got sick, uh, and so he was doing like any movie he possibly could in the '80s to just make bank. And one of them was Heat. And he played like a CIA operative running around trying to kill people. But it was at that time in the mid-80s when he was making, like I said, movies like Stick and Malone. Uh, and Heat was right in the middle of that. But when I heard that there was a movie coming out called Heat in 1995, I was like, what are they remaking? Are they remaking the, the classic Burt Reynolds B-movie, Heat? And then there is The Heat with uh, Sandra Bullock and, uh, and Melissa McCarthy. But that's neither here nor there. But anyway, Heat with Burt Reynolds... I prefer, I prefer the stupid 80s heat Burt Reynolds action movie over Michael Mann's overrated thriller from 95. And then finally, Bug. Bug uh, came out in 2006, directed by William Friedkin, uh, Ashley Judd, uh, Michael Shannon, based upon Tracy Letts, uh, you know, popular play, which was just remounted here in Chicago a couple of months ago, directed by my friend David Cromer and featuring Carrie Coombs. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting play, um, uh, and, uh, and so they made a movie out of it, and, but, but the bug that I'm talking about, the one that I actually prefer, came out in 1975, and it starred the late, great Bradford Dillman as a scientist who discovers this elect, this bug that shoots electricity, like a giant cockroach, this species of cockroach after an earthquake in, like, Arizona, and he's just this scientist, this weird scientist who lives in the middle of nowhere in a shack, right on like a fault line and there's a huge um 
earthquake and these bugs come out and he starts to do experiments on these bugs that can shoot electricity they're giant ugly cockroaches and then they you know they become intelligent they can spell words on the wall they start to fly and they you know they're going to take over the world and everybody is going to die because of these electric giant cockroaches uh, I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, uh, Bradford Dillman, the late, great Bradford Dillman is in that movie. And I adore that movie. I saw it at the Davis Theater when I was like 10. Saw it with my friend Danny Long. We saw it like four or five times. When it shows up on cable, it shows up on, on Sven Gulli. I watch it. I love that movie. Um, and uh, in fact, an old friend of mine from the Factory Theater, uh, who I directed in some, in some plays and who has gone on to star in sh shows like Stranded, and uh, uh, she was on Chad. Brooke Dillman is her name. A really terrific. She's in Superbad. She plays a teacher in Superbad. Uh, I was lucky enough to actually work with her back in the day at the Factory Theater in the mid to late 90s. And I directed her in a few shows and I acted with her. Uh, and she's great. Brooke Dillman, brilliant, hilarious. She does a lot of voiceover work, too, um, you know, for a lot of popular TV shows. Anyway, she's awesome. She's married uh, to the son of Bradford Dillman. And when I first met Brooke, and she said she was married to Charlie Dillman. Um, and she said, that yeah, that Bradford Dillman is his dad. And I met Charlie, and I'm like, your dad is Bradford Dillman? And I started freaking out. I'm Bradford Dillman, legendary guy, really good friends with, uh, with Clint, did a ton of movies, starred in some great Clint Eastwood movies, um, was a tremendous actor uh, in uh, uh, Planet of the Apes movies. This guy was like a, a staple in my childhood in the 70s and into the 80s. Fantastic. Bradford Dillman, fantastic. Terrific, terrific actor, great character actor. And when Brooke introduced me to her husband, Charlie, and said, yeah, his dad is Bradford Dillman, I almost shit my pants. I was like, you kidding me? So they got me autographs and all kinds of stuff and, and all kinds of stuff. And I became a freak. And he knew that I loved bugs, so he wrote, don't let the bug." He signed his book, Bradford Dillman signed his book to me and said, don't beware of all the bugs out there. And I freaked out. Love it. Anyway, uh, my love to, to Charlie and Brooke Dillman, and uh, I love uh, Bradford Dillman. Anyway, Bradford Dillman is in this legendary sci-fi horror film from the 70s called Bug. Much better than the Friedkin movie based on Tracy Letts' play. So anyway, th don't get confused uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Bad Boys, The Avengers, Twilight Rush, Crash, Gladiator, Frozen, The Fast and the Furious, Project X, Notorious, Proof, Crossroads, The Island, Heat, and Bug. All right? All right, so anyway, movies that have the same title that are completely different, and now we've got sequels that have the same title as the first movie, and that's one of the stupidest trends of all time. And keeping up that stupid trend is the latest Scream. Just called, not Scream 5, it's just called fucking Scream. Anyway, I'm seeing it tomorrow. I can't wait to see it. I'm very excited about it, and you'll get a review right here on this channel, and I'll start reviewing movies regularly with Eric Childress and with Steve Procopi on a regular basis every other week. We'll be doing it every other week on my podcast, the Nick D Podcast, on Radio Misfits Network. So check it out, radiomisfits.com. All right, thanks. Scream 5 comes out this weekend. Not Scream, Scream 5.